Good morning, Spencer County. As we are now on the eve of Accepting Children Monday, just a couple of short announcements. The first is the assurance statement and document. Please be certain that we have the assurance document uh, because after next week, we have directed people not to uh, be allowed in the buildings if that assurance document is not on hand and in file. As a result of the special board meeting last night, uh, the decision was made to mask all kindergarten students, just like we do uh, elementary, middle, and high school students. However, it's only recommended for preschool students. Uh, that recommendation is simply because we realize the difficulty in keeping four and five year olds masked the entire time through the instructional process. We'll continue to uh, do social distancing with those groups as we do with the rest of the school. However, we just want to make sure that as preschool students are moving throughout the hallways and from place to place, they have a mask on. Uh, it's only recommended, but if we can capture that during their time of movement and where they're associating with other people throughout the halls, uh, we figured that was probably the best that we might be able to do with them. As you'll notice, the schools, when you do come in, uh, you'll see sanitization stations, you'll see signage, you'll see plexiglass. You'll see that our staff has done an outstanding job in pre preparing the buildings to accept students. And as we begin this process, uh, just know that uh, our staff is, com is absolutely pleased, as am I, to receive students, to have students back in our hallways, back in our classrooms, in learning. It will not look as it did this time last year, uh, but slowly but surely, we'll ease into a transition back to normalcy. Thank you. Look forward to seeing your kids Monday. God bless. Hello, Spencer County families. Today you have your school nurses here to provide a few updates, health updates related to returning to our buildings on Monday with our hybrid schedule. Last night, the Spencer County Board of Education voted to, in man, to mandate and require masks for kindergarten students. This is a new requirement for this age group. This requirement is for the safety of students and staff as masking is one of the easiest ways to prevent the spread of COVID-19. For preschool students, masking is still recommended. So when we start back on Monday, all staff and students in kindergarten through 12th grade are required to mask. The mask must be multi-layered and it must be worn at all times in the school buildings and on the bus. On August 31st, the Department of Public Health and the Kentucky Department of Education updated their Healthy at School guidance. Now masks can only be lowered when actively eating or drinking, or if students are outside for things such as recess. Social distancing must still be maintained. My next topic is about an emergency administrative regulation that Mr. Adams talked about last Friday. This regulation was put in effect to help minimize the spread of COVID-19 in the school setting. Parents and guardians are now required to report if their student or child report uh, or test positive for COVID-19 to their student's school. Receiving this information is important to our school district to monitor and accurately report the data into a state system where it can be viewed publicly, thus allowing a parent or guardian to make an informed decision regarding safety and education of their student. So if your child tests positive, please call that child's school and report that information to the child's school nurse or an administrator, that would be the principal or the assistant principal. From there, we will follow up with the local contact tracers, determine who may need to quarantine within that school building, and enter that data at the end of each school day into the state COVID K through 12 dashboard. That information will be available on the Kentucky KY COVID-19 .ky.gov website. Next up, we'll have our new high school nurse, Jess, talk to you for a few minutes. Thank you. 
Good morning, my name is Jessica Sullivan. You can call me Nurse Jess. I am the new nurse at Spencer County High School. I have been a nurse for 13 years and the last five and a half of them have been um, with Shelby County Public Schools as a school nurse there. I am so excited to be here um, and finally they have a group of four so every school has a nurse um, and I'm just going to go over a few things with you um, that have changed since last year. Water fountains, they are all blocked off because of COVID um, and the risk of transferring germs. So we ask that every student bring a water bottle. Um, we do have water filling stations in the schools that are touchless. You just put your bottle under it and it pours the water in. You don't have to touch it at all. So that is how students will be um, getting their water. With the masks on, it's hard to stay hydrated. So just remind your student to drink throughout the day. I also wanted to go over um, how to take off your mask and what to do when you're eating. So when you have your mask on and it's time to eat, so in the breakfast they're going to get um, like grab and go breakfast and it should have a bag with it. Um, may have a napkin but it should have a bag so you can lay your bag out and then you're just going to take your mask off and lay it down just like that. Same for lunch, you might have a napkin that you can lay it on um, and then when you pick it up try not to touch the front of it, just pick pick it up by the ears and put it on. Now, if you have a lanyard um, that your mask is on, you can also use that. I know that I have one and it just kind of hangs right there. Um, for our littles, you might want to just take it all the way off so that it doesn't collect food throughout your breakfast and lunch. Um, but next we have up Nurse Kathy from the middle school. She has a few things to discuss with you as well. Thank you. Hello, Spencer County families. My name is Nurse Kathy Dipple, and I work at the, the middle school. I want to take a few minutes and talk about what happens if your child gets sick as, at school. You're going to see um, a lot of changes within the building, desks six feet apart, encouraging masks throughout the day, um, things like that. But what you might not notice is some of the preparation that us school nurses have been, been doing. Um, but first, I want to thank you guys for completing and getting those back to the school, the parental assurance forms. Um, it's been fantastic, the, the amount that, that's coming in. So we wanna thank you for that. And that's just assuring us that you're gonna be doing those at-home checks uh, for illnesses before you even send your child to school. So thank you for that. So what have we been doing? Um, since probably the end of July, we've been studying the Healthy at School guidelines set forth by the state. Uh, we've been collaborating with the local health department, and we've even met with the Department of Public Health contact tracers, all to prepare and what to do if a child gets sick. Uh, we already kind of know what to do for um, a positive case or if a child has got to quarantine. Uh, we're just gonna follow those guidelines and that's set forth by the contact tracer. So if your child becomes positive of COVID or has to quarantine uh, because there's a family member that, that's a positive case of COVID or a close contact of somebody and they have to quarantine, the contact tracer will take over and will guide you and your family. Um, but what if you do those checks at home and you, you know you're sending a healthy child to school? So what happens when they come to school and they become ill? Um, let's talk about the symptoms. On the parental assurance form, there's a wide range of symptoms from fever um, to congestion and runny nose to GI symptoms, a whole wide range of symptoms. And we know those symptoms can overlap with other illnesses like strep throat the common cold, asthma, flu, even allergies. So how are we to know? How are you to know families? And how are we to know what is what? So um, we've de developed a protocol, which we're following the Department of Public Health guidelines for um, illnesses within the school. So if your child comes to school and they develop a fever or they develop symptoms, any of those symptoms that we just listed, um, we're going to be calling you um, and, and, and asking that you come and, and pick up that student. And, um, and there's different things you can do to get the child back into school because I'm sure that you want to do that as quickly as you can. Um, but again, we need some 
some guidance, um, probably from a doctor. So if they have a fever or if they have symptoms, they can go to the, a, a, a physician, a pediatrician, physician, and come back with an alternate diagnosis. Maybe the phys physician has determined that it's strep throat and they need to be treated for with an antibiotic. Then the physician um, can decide at that time if they want the, the child to be tested for COVID, that's up to the, to the physician. Um, I'm hoping they're doing that. I feel like they are. Um, a lot of times, especially with these multiple symptoms, sore throats, congestion, fatigue, body aches, you just don't know. And the only way to know is to have a COVID test. But let's just say you take, we've sent the child home, um, you've taken them to the doctor and you've got, gotten an alternate diagnosis, then that physician is going to, um, just like in the past, give a doctor's note as to when to return to school may return to school when symptoms have improved and they're no longer fever free for 24 hours without fever reducing medicines. Typical stuff like the, we've always done in the past. Um, but if you don't go to the doctor for that alternate diagnosis and you don't go get a COVID test, these are the guidelines that you must meet for that child to come back to school. It's three things and they have to meet all three things. First is they have to be fever free for 24 hours without fever reducers. No Advil, no Motrin, no Tylenol. They have, the symptoms have got to be improving. Um, whatever the symptoms are, they must be improving. And lastly, they have, it has to be 10 days since the initial start of the symptoms. So three things to get that child, your, your child, that our student back into school. So an alternate diagnosis from a physician. Um, physician may choose to COVID test, and I hope they are or the non-test um, criteria is to meet all three of those things. No fever, symptoms improving, and 10 days since onset of symptoms. We want to use extreme caution, and, um, and so we're gonna be very conservative. A lot of communication is gonna be happening between me and the parent and the guardian um, to determine what's best for the child. If your child does have to be out for 10 days, 14 days, longer. I don't want you to worry that we will work through this. We will we'll, we'll continue to work together as a school district, as families, as we're, as we're going through this pandemic. We're still working together. I wanna encourage you to have a conversation with every student, your, ch your children, about reporting these things to you. Um, oftentimes uh, in the past, personal experience, um, a, the child may not be feeling well when they wake up and they're like, oh, I'll just go see Nurse Kathy when I go to school. So we want you having that conversation and encourage your child to tell you each day, how do you feel? Check their temperature, anything new, anything, maybe they have allergies. We understand that, that children, even adults, even staff members have allergies. Um, but has the allergies worsened? Have you gotten another symptom? Maybe extreme fatigue now um, with the allergies. It's just something that we need to take a look at. So I don't want you to worry that we will continue to work together. We will get through this. I want to encourage communication. If you do decide to keep your child home, give me a call and we can work through that and determine when they should come back to school. I um, also want to encourage parents to consider getting the flu vaccine. Uh, there's going to be a, a free flu clinic um, October 8th, hosted by the local health department in the Country Mart parking lot from 3.30 to 6.30. So please consider that. Talk to your child about social distancing, wearing their mask, being good hand washers. Um, a definition of close contact is within six feet of someone greater than 15 minutes regardless of mask. So if you are contacted by a contact tracer, they're gonna to wanna to know who those close contacts are and that's the definition. So if we're coming to school and we're keeping our distance and we're wearing our mask and, and, and we're not huddled together, then you can confirm to a contact tracer that there's not been, uh, that you've met all those guys, social distancing guidelines. Um, we're here, There's, we're, we're, we're proud to say we've got, we're a team of four school nurses. Um, so reach out to any of us with questions. Let's keep that line of communication open. 
and I'm excited for, to, for next week. It's been too long since children have been in this building and we're excited to see everybody. Please call us, email us um, with questions and concerns. Thank you very much.